951 flip equivalent binary trees. Uh, for a binary tree T, we can define a flip operation as follows. Choose any node, swap the left and the right subtrees. A binary tree X is flip equivalent to a binary Y tree if Y and to a binary tree Y if and only if we can make X equal to Y after some numbers of some number of flip operation. Write a function that determines whether two binary trees are flip equivalent. These trees are given by root nodes root one and root two. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think the first thought that comes to my mind about this problem is um, well, this is a uh, this is only a subset flip. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, that, I think that was the first thought that one that come, came to my mind was that like, do you have to flip, right? And then the other thing uh, that comes into my mind, that I worry a little bit because I think sometimes the, the test cases are a little weak, weaker than you expect. Um, because for a, for a tree of 100 nodes, how many? I guess there's only six steps. Actually, that's not so bad. Uh, because so my thought process now or was was that like, you know, for a full tree of 100 nodes, how, what is the depth of that, right? And the depth of that is, I don't know, two to the, was it two to the eight? So the damage is. Uh, uh, 128, right? No, that's 256. So 2 to the 7 uh, is 128. So that means your depth is at most 7. So I think uh, that will maybe is good enough. Because um, that means... I, I think the, the uh, mathematical analysis is a little tricky uh, be, in trying to figure out how what's the possible thing. Um, but I think there's a lot of self-filtering that allow it to I think the analysis on um, the complexity is a little tricky but uh, but yeah we could just do this recursively right uh, and and yeah and we could even use this recursively I think uh, that's kind of uh, and we could just actually use the definition pretty closely excuse me uh, which is, um, and there's a dot well type thing. Um, okay. So, first of all, we have to do uh, with root one dot well, it's not root two dot well, uh, return false. And I'm, oh, why does, oh, because I've been using Python, so I haven't needed to close braces. So, I'm used to closing my own braces still. But um, uh, th this is return false. So, this is the, an obvious base case. Um, let's say, uh, Okay, so what are the cases, right? So let's say if uh, oops, now uh, hmm, there's a lot of weirdness. Uh, I I don't know if this uh, well, I am not usually good at um. I don't know if there's a cleaner way to kind of separate out this case uh, again separate all these cases so I usually just enumerate them especially on the contest where I'm sweet but uh oops uh actually I want all four to be true but okay I mean th th you could get funky of the logic but I'm just gonna write them out for for now uh, I think there's also like a more trivial case where if one is It's not no. Then uh, either uh, I think if there's like a children mark, maybe that's how it will be simpler. But it is what it is. Then we turn force. Um, otherwise, if we do that. No, actually, we we. we mm, I think we could simplify this a little bit. Okay, so let's just add another one. If root one is equal to no, or then I guess this is true. Oh. Uh, if root one is not equal to root two, equal to no. 
then we turn force. I guess we, this could come ahead first. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, uh, yeah, I mean, I think to be honest, a lot of it is just practice. I think, um, I, and I actually was, um, like one of my uh, mentees ish, if you want to call him that. Uh, what, I have a mentee whom I still work with, and he actually recently got into programming uh, these problems. Uh, and through him, I actually find out what my because I so kind of the disclaimer is that I've been doing on and off, so not it's not a like I but I, I was gonna say that I've been doing these for years, um, on and off, so not like straight, uh, but as a result, um. You know, there's a lot of stuff that uh, uh, that I take for granted that, like, he has to be like, Larry, people don't, you know, uh, this is not typical. And I'm like, oh, I did not realize this. But, uh, but, but yeah. So, like, so I think uh, just a lot of practice and you kind of see patterns in, in both problem solving and the uh, coding. Uh, I, I will get into that. Uh, I'll answer your question fully after this problem because so I don't want to get stuck in the middle, but uh, a little bit. But yeah, I will answer your question. No worries. Uh, but there are a lot of online books and YouTubes and stuff. I think, uh, it, yeah, uh, give me a minute. Uh, okay, so now I don't have to worry about the no cases here. And I could just return um, equivalent of root one dot left uh two dot left and so both these has to be true or uh the the flip version of this right Uh, maybe that's good enough. Let's see. Let's at least try try on the test case. Whoops. Too, too much Python. Sorry. No semicolons. <laughs> uh, okay. That's only thing I maybe worry about is time limited or if I missed one case, which is possible. Wow. Java is really fast. Maybe I should do lead code only in Java. I mean, look at this, zero milliseconds, huh. It's either that or they don't have a good timer and they just put zero milliseconds for everybody, which would be hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't understand like how the time timing works, to be honest. Also nice to see your ODXS. Uh, yeah, I don't know how this is so fast, uh, but <laughs> It might as well as give me negative second. Uh, it gave me a true before I submitted it. No, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think this is a very. Ba uh, I would definitely recommend this uh, question for an interview. Uh, in that it is, um, it tests a couple of key concepts. One is trees, which maybe in real life you could, uh, unless you get into like MLE decision tree stuff. Uh, trees probably don't come into play that much in real life, but but it's still fun to know and people and and. Interviews, interviewers love trees, so you have to know trees. So definitely, I like that part, this problem for that reason. Um, and two is recursion, which obviously also interviewers love in general. So definitely, get, I mean, uh, I think it's not my type of question to ask if I'm an in, as an interviewer, but uh, but it's generally like a very reasonable question that I could see asking. Uh, and, and I think the thing with trees is kind of doing it in a way that um, it's very clear, right? So. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, yeah, and this is complexity is a little tricky due to all the branching. I think uh, so. It, despite what it looks, it only branches twice at each. Uh, uh, I would, it's not even depth. Depth is not the right word. Uh, it's it's like two to the two to the depth almost or something like that. In the worst case, right. Um, but you know, there's a lot of self-filtering, uh, and I don't know if you could construct. Um, and also because with all the values are unique, uh, 
actually it doesn't really branch, right? So maybe it's linear actually, now that I think about it, because it doesn't really, uh, yeah, because it's unique. Um, th uh, um, these both cannot be true at the same time, so only one of them will f have a further con uh, recursion, and therefore there are, the one time is O of N, which is linear, because you look at each node on, at most two or three times and so forth. Um, uh, yeah, actually, I think you can do this. I mean, so the question is how I could do this iteratively. Um, I mean, with breadth search, you, yeah, you can, uh, you just have to keep a list of all the stuff you have to process. And then when you process it, you only insert one new item to the queue. And then you, from that way, you can prove that's all random very trivially. But, uh, but, but yeah, so you have, you know, you you start with uh, inserting root one and root two as the nodes to compare, and then every time uh, you process it, you um, you put root one left and then root two left, and so forth, and uh, and then put, put that in processing in the tree, uh, in the queue side, and then just keep on doing it. And that's how you do it iteratively. I think that's possible. And actually, uh, and using a queue or iteratively, uh, you would also very obviously doing it in a level first thing. So it's almost like instead of a, uh, I wouldn't say it's pre-order, uh, I guess, yeah, instead, so it's like the difference between doing it in pre-order and, uh, and post-order? No, that's not right, right, I don't know. Level first versus, okay, maybe I'm just trying too hard to use those vocabulary. Maybe it doesn't really fit what it, how you're doing in this one, but yeah. That's kind of um, how you would do it. Uh, can you make just two lists at each level and compare them? Uh, but there, there could be two to the n possibility on each level, though, if you're not careful, right? Um, it depends on how you do it. I think you could definitely probably do it. I think you, the way that you're talking about is almost like a dynamic programming thing on each level, uh, in that there are only two suffix to each node. Uh, and then you use that to build on your next level. So, I mean, and this, which I think you could do, uh, definitely, because I think that's one of the core concepts in dynamic programming and how you save uh, space. Uh, and it comes up a lot, actually. Uh, or it comes up often, maybe you don't need it. At least for lead code, it's not necessary. Uh, at least I haven't found that usually to be necessary. But, uh, but yeah, but I think that's the same concept where you almost like, Okay, you step up. But again, obviously, all those things are way overkill. This is ten lines of code, so maybe a little bit messy. But but I also actually am happy that uh, I'm able to do this a little bit cleaner than I initially was. Because you saw me try to do this whole thing with um, with a lot of other cases, but this really simplifies the case more. Uh, once I remember to check the notes, the root notes for no, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'll do one more problem in Java or something, but oh, I guess maybe there's also a canonical trap. Man, that's such a fancy. Ah, okay. Actually, no, that's that makes sense. Uh, it, it, it's a very fancy vocabulary, but it just means normalizing both, uh, uh, both trees so that like you could like let's and the way they wrote it which but which actually makes sense even right off the bat is like you you can work both trees to a, a binary search tree and if they're the same then they should be the same right otherwise they're not the same tree uh and i think something like that is fine yeah i think that's a pretty cool idea like i don't know if i would have like that's a lot of work <laughs> so i don't know if i would do it uh or came up with it without another forcing function or something like that but that's a cute way of doing it for sure um yeah, 